Hi, welcome to the breadboard. It's a little bit of an unusual video for uh, my channel and what we're going to do is look at how we can make a 3D printable mask of your own skull. This came about because my daughter quite a while ago had a fall and uh, slightly injured her head and as a result of this she had to go to the hospital get a CAT scan done and then go to the doctors and take the results there. So what she had to do was get a copy of the CAT scan and take it with her to the doctor so that he could look at the imaging. One of the things around that is my daughter is also a um, fan of LARPing. This is the um, live action role play kind of thing. And she wanted to make some masks for some fantasy characters and things. So one of the opportunities that came up is that we could use the CAT scan if we could figure out how and make a 3D printable model of her own skull expanded to fit on her head as a mask instead. So these are the process that we ended up with to do that. Now initially when we went through uh, my daughter and I we worked together to do this and she actually made it into a project for her school as well a university she's at which is in um, Ryerson in Toronto in Canada here and uh, they you know they, she's doing a 3D printing or 3D modeling class there as well so just she decided to do this as one of her projects so I assisted her and uh, took her through the process and things and this is what we came up with so the first thing you actually need of course is a CAT scan and that's where the pain comes in as far as the free bits and pieces everything for this video is based on free um, software so you don't have to go buy anything if you don't have to but you do need to get a CAT scan uh, now, I'm sure you can probably get these done privately, but I would imagine they're probably quite expensive. My daughter was unlucky enough to get a free one because she had the fall and hurt her head. And as you can see in this opening slide, that's quite a dent. And this has not been embellished at all. In fact, if anything, it's been slightly reduced because of the um, processing that we've done to the model to make it a little bit stronger and smoothing out and making it... Uh, of a reasonable size that we could 3D print it without having way too many artifacts in the um, still file that we ended up with for printing. So anyway, without further ado, that's a bit of the background. Let's go through and see what it takes to make one of these things. All right, so overview of the process. I'm going to have videos inserted to show you each thing as we go as well. So the first thing you need, I've already said, you need a CAT scan. Because I don't know if you know, but a CAT scan consists of hundreds of slices through the object that it's scanning that then get put together to make a three-dimensional model. So in the case of a skull, you may have, you know, two, three hundred slices of the skull that then when they're stacked can give you the full view. Now we don't have the absolute full skull. It would have been really nice if we had the teeth and everything else. In this case, because they were only interested in the forehead, they stopped the scan just below the nose. Um, but nevertheless, it's enough for us to do what we want to do. So let's just continue. So loading up Infocellius, we pick the image set that has the most images in it. As you can see here, the, our particular one has 240 images in it down here. Uh, and we're going to do an import within Invisilius of the DICOM image and we'll select this pane for the set of images to import. What it will then do is it will create a view like the ones on the right side of the page here and what we're going to do is we're going to click on create surface. Now we're going to do this multiple times so I'm just going to say it right at the beginning if you check the checkbox um, and we'll have a look at that in a second, to overwrite last surface, it'll keep doing an update to that surface. So let me open up Invisilius now and we'll just go through that and show you what the steps are. I'm not going to show you how to download and install Invisilius, it's just like any other Windows application. Um, I will provide the links to where you can download the software from though, should you want to do something of your own. To start with, we're going to import DICOM images, so we click here we go to uh, the folder that contains all of the images and you know because and that's what it's looking for in this case my daughter Jessica is called Jessica Brain so we just select that folder we say okay and now it's going to load all of these images now there's a lot of them because they've done standard x-rays two different types of three-dimensional 
scans and a few other things. So we were picking the one that we're interested in in a moment. So here is the image and that are on the CD. So we are interested in the one with the most images, which is the, in this case, it's labeled as head standard axial. So we're just going to click that one. And then we're going to simply say import. And it's going to do its little import routine. And now it's going to show us um, the different views. So what we're interested in is this one on the bottom right here. Um, it doesn't initially always update all of the images properly. So if I just move this, you can see you can look at different slices. It's all using that same image set. Um, obviously the software didn't, that's a right hand view. This is, looks like a top view. And this one here is a, looks like a front view of it. So you can see there's your eyeballs and stuff like that, really fun. Um, the one we want is this bottom right one, as I said. And what we need to do here is basically on this cube, um, we want to look as an isometric view, but we also want to make it render. Now, it hasn't been rendered yet. On the top left here, we've got the mask, which is just defaulted to mask one. It's set for bone is a preference that you can look at, and that's what we want just at least for one of our images. So we're just going to check this. We'll just leave it checked. And we just hit Create Surface right here. And now it's going to um, render this 3D model into a surface and present it on this bottom right-hand panel. So we're just going to give that a moment to get it done. OK, now it's done. And you can see here we have a view of the skull. You can just use your scroll mouse um, to look at it. And you can just click your left mouse button and rotate it quite easily. So now that the model is rendered, we can um, in make this full screen, but just clicking on here. All right, and now we can have a look at it to see if it's what we want, um, if the right level of detail is there. Now, one of the things I showed in one of in the slides coming up is you can actually adjust the density setting. This is this little thing over here. Um, to look at different things. If we set it to about minus 850 on this scale, so we're at 226 right now up to 30, uh, 3071. So if we set it to minus 850 and let it re-render, you'll see that it will actually show everything, including the hair and the skin and all that kind of stuff. So you can see here with this down at minus 850 um, and including the range all the way up to 3071, we do have the hair and everything else as well. Now, we don't want the hair, obviously, because we're trying to make a mask, and that doesn't want to have the details of the hair. If we also rotate around here, you can see we've got the ears and things like that. The back is flat because, obviously, uh, Jessica was laying on a table when this was done. It's also hollow because it's now showing the outer flesh and different densities. So uh, it's very actually interesting looking at a CAT scan when you can do this and see that you can actually look at the different um, body parts. It's kind of a little weird when you're looking at your own daughters. And, you know, in this case, you can see the uh, ear canal coming into the brain and all that kind of fun stuff. So what we're going to do, though, is what we need is skin only, no hair, and we also need the skull. And I found through adjustment on this particular CAT scan that having a value of about minus um, 300 was about right for skin only with no hair and other details. So let me just redo that surface. OK, so that's done. And now, as you can see here, it's pretty clean image now. There is the odd tiny trace, like a little dot there that um, we don't need to worry about. We'll clean that up and some tiny traces around the back. But we pretty much have a good detail of the face as far as the image goes without any um, hair and other artifacts on the outside are very, very few of them. We still have a hole in the top of the head. because um, They started the CAT scan a little into the skull already, and they finished it um, before it got to the bottom. So we're just going to make do with what we have. Um, but yeah, uh, by the way, a little tip, if you want to get back to a nice frontal image, click on this icon over here and just click front, and you're back to a uh, straight on view again. So once you've got this done, um, you can actually go to export the data. Just click on, on item four here. So we were on number two, which is where we were playing with these figures. 
We want to export the data for number, which is number four, export data. We click on the down arrow and you can export a picture, but we don't want a picture. We want a 3D surface. So you click on export 3D surface and now you can actually export this at this level um, to an STL file. You see there's all sorts of different versions you can use. OBJs, um, X3D, VTPs, VMR, VRML, etc. But what we're going to use is the uh, binary STL file. And we'll save this out and um, then we're going to have a look at it in a minute with Mesh, Mesh Mixer. So we'll click Save and then that's going to export it and it's pretty much done. Now one of the things you can see here is there are a few extra things. Like My daughter was wearing I think um, earrings at the time and you, so you can see bits of those uh, around the ear. Uh, like I said, a hole in the top of the skull, same thing on this side from an earring. Um, and you know, inside the model, of course, we don't care really what's inside here because um, we're only going to use the face one, i.e. this particular model, to make an impression on the inside of the skull so that we can remove it and make it so that it fits properly to the wearer. So now I'm going to adjust this to go back to the skull only view, which I think a setting of, I think it was 226 was the ideal one for the skull. So, we'll, sorry, region of interest, that's the one we want. So we'll make this plus 226 this time and we'll create that surface. So we've already exported this one. Now we're creating the skull on its own. Okay, so here's the skull rendered, and as you can see, here's the reason why my daughter got the CAT scan done in the first place. Um, yeah, quite painful it was. Um, you can see here, this is not perfect, um, but it's pretty good. The, the rendering is just fine for the skull. Um, we do have a little bit of patching to do, and you can see here that because it's the skull, um, we have an inside of the skull and the outside, so we need to patch this hole here. We'll do that in Mesh Mixer. Um, you have a whole bunch of things underneath here to do with the spine and various other bone related bits and pieces um, which again need cleaning up. There's a few loose parts here. Now we could try and, um, you know, there's nothing you can do about these in here. We could try and adjust the levels to try and get rid of some of them but it's really not worth it. This is a very good image to use and all of these little loose artifacts we can get rid of in Max Mesh Mixer very very easily so all we need to do is to export this one as a model uh, we'll export it as a 3d surface all right so that's done now we're pretty much done with Inverselius uh, we can close this down and move on so let's just close this uh, no we won't bother saving that and what we've done is um, these steps right here okay so we've we've played around with the density map, we've created an image for the skull, an image for the face, and we've exported it as an STL file um, onto the drive. Now, the thing to note here, for those that are new to this, is name your files appropriately and know where you're putting them because you're going to need to find them later. This is the uh, culmination of probably tens or days of effort trying out different software and different processes and things like that. And now that we've got it all together, we're sharing it with you so that you can do it yourself with ease. Anyway, the next step we need to do is we need to go to Mesh Mixer and clean up the models. So here is a little bit of blurb that we put together to help from a written perspective. But basically, we're going to load it into Mesh Mixer. We're going to analyze it for any defects that may be in the model. We're going to patch some things like the hole in the top of the face, the hole in the top of the skull. Um, and we're going to remove all of these extra artifacts and things that are also in there. Um, so let's go across to Mesh Mixer and show you how you do that. Now because each of these um, sections are about 20 odd minutes each, I'm going to stop this video and start a part two for how we use the Mesh Mixer to clean up the images that we've just exported from um, the Invisilius 3.0.